Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Only Whites. I'm your friend Amnon Shaktivel, and this is part two of the Framework Development Series and part twelve of the entire Playwright Textbook series. I hope you are enjoying this series so far. If you if you do so, please um, you know bump up this videos uh, by clicking on the like button. Um, without wasting much time, let's get into the content of this particular video. Um, so. In the last video, we have written a basic code, but then it has a lot of problems. We have hard coded the URL, we have hard coded the usernames and passwords to log into the application. Um, we want to move them away from the code to the particular config files so it can be configured easily for different set of environments. So we are also going to do um, uh, learn how we could uh, run our say, test in multiple environments. Right? Uh, we're going to use a library called as .env. But we want to dive deep into that uh, within a few seconds. So let's get into the IntelliJ. And so this is the problem. So we have hard coded the URL, hard coded the username and password. Let's say in some applications, the username and password for different environments remains the same. So you could act accordingly. But I assume it, uh, you know, different environments have different use URL, different username, and different password. So I want to treat all of them as configs and then move it out from the test. Right? Very very simple. In case of Java, we normally prefer using property files, but then it's it's much of a tradition or a convention to use .env files in case of TypeScript and JavaScript ecosystem. So, so what we're going to do is we want to create .env files. It's much similar to the config files. We have a key value pairs um, stored inside this, and then we load them into a, a process environment variables, and then use it in our test. So it's going to be much easier than than what we normally do in Java. Uh, let's get started. So for the first thing we want to do is move this away from the uh, code. And for that, I want to create a new uh, variable like this. And then uh, I will copy this particular URL and I put it here. Uh, yeah, username, password, so looks good. I moved this here, but then I want to load this env en content from the env files into the process environment variables, right? In order to do that, I want to have a library uh, called as uh, .env. There are multiple wrappers available for the .env. Um, like we have .env, .env CLI, .env TS type, TypeScript ecosystem, and there is .env vault, um, and then much, much more than that. So in, in our case, we're going to use .env, and we will see how we could uh, use other wrappers uh, in the coming videos. But for now, we'll, we'll start with small steps. We install .env, could also verify in the package.json, uh, there is a package here, all right? Now let's go ahead and remove this and use process.env uh, and then use .url. So whatever the name that you have given here, you have to just use it there. Uh, similarly, uh, process, uh, uh, dot env dot uh, username. I know this is this is not the right way to directly use process env uh, variables, but then we'll just start from small steps. Uh, password, right? And yes, all looks good. Let's go to the playwright config dot is again, guys. Whenever the playwright script gets started, um, <laughs> we want to do the first thing. The first thing is loading the env files into a process environment variables. In order to do that, we just need to do a config. That's it. And now you just import this config from .env. So what it does is uh, you can also set um, paths. For example, there are multiple options like this. Um, you can um, set the path. You can override the existing ones. You can, if you are using dot .env vault, which is which is good if you want to store secrets. And then activate it at the runtime. You can also use the dot key, dot env key. You can pass it from here. But then in our case, uh, we want to pass the uh, path to dot env. In our case, it's just this, and we don't have to do anything, right? So this is you can add this, but then by default also it will load the dot env if it present present in the root folder. So we don't even have to mention it, right? So now uh, cancel, and I want to remove just this. Right. Good. This is more than enough. Let's try to run the test and then see what happens. So npx playwright test. So it picked up the URL uh, from the from the config, and that is what we want. 
right? So now this looks good, right? But then we want to handle multiple environments, not our test to run our multiple environments. It is also much easy. Let's go ahead and create a new env file. So, so the logic is this: create a new env file for each environment and name it with the environment dot env dot stages. And then, if you also want to have something for development, you can also create one more file dot env dot development or dev whatever you want to call it. You can call it and then put it here. In our case, let's copy all the content from here. Let's paste it here and. Uh, I'm going to use an invalid username so that we know um, it is picking from the staging file, right? For now, I don't think this is needed. So let's remove this. Um, we have env, which will be the production URL, and then .env.staging, uh, which will be the staging URL. Yeah. So now I also want to tell playwright config because if you don't tell it, it will automatically load .env file. It won't uh, really know that it has to load staging uh, here. So what I want to do is uh, I want to apply a condition. So I want to pass a new variable, uh, environment variable called as environment. If it has some values, what I want to do is I want to load. Maybe it's suggesting. Okay, so it just prints what is the environment that we are running the test, and then it loads dot env dot the environment. So if we are passing the environment as staging, it gonna you know pick that particular file. So we pass in some of the staging, it is going to pick dot env dot state, right? As simple as that. Else, right? Else, um, it's going to do the default dot env file. That's all about it. And then let's go ahead and pass the environment. So, in order to do that, you can just say environment equal to staging. So, that's the environment variable that we want to pass. So we are now passing this value. So this will become truthy and it goes inside this and loads the staging uh, env file, right? So let's go ahead and do npm playwright test. Let's make an edit. And then this time the login should fail because we have given invalid credentials in the staging file. So yes, the login failed and it picked the right env files for processing. You can also see the environment that we passed is staging good all looks good here but then the only problem is we are using process.env.url everywhere in the code which is not so good one main reason is let's say you want to let's say if this is undefined let's say if url is undefined and then you want to set some default values to it you cannot do it in all the places right and then it is also not a good practice to directly use process env files because we do not know uh what could be the values for them, right? You cannot really control uh, the values uh, properly. So it is always better uh, to to have some kind of configurations. Uh, there are multiple ways how we could solve this. Um, and then the first way, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a folder called as framework config, or we can also call it as config. Um, and then you can also have a small, uh, there are a couple of ways. I wanna tell both the ways. Uh, the first way is you can have um, an envts file uh, where you could say uh, you have a class called as uh, env and then you you store all these variables as public static read only one now if there is a problem and you want to set some default values to it you could obviously do that by here, like here and then you don't have to you know uh, tell you are using process.env env everywhere now if you want to use this in the code you just simply say env uh, dot space you are that's it and then you import the env wherever you want uh, same goes here right um, let's go ahead and test yeah everything looks good right so it fails all looks good um, there is also another way that you could try uh, but then i would recommend using this approach but then you could also say um, so TypeScript and JavaScript is very natural to JSONs. So what you could do is you could do something like this. And then if there is a problem, you could, you could do this, right? That's obviously the another way of doing this, but then I prefer the this way. Uh, there is no right and wrong here. Um, you know, it's up to you how do you want to do it. Um, yeah. 
Uh, the only problem that I see with this approach is, um, you know, if it, if um, it goes, people might use it, you know, in a, in a proper way, like they can put a nested JSON, they'll try to add everything here. So so that's why I I not do this, but then you can do this. And then in, in your code, you could simply say um, config, um, not this one, the config from my framework config, and then you want, you could do, uh, so this is username, right? You can do any of this. But then, um, as I mentioned before, um, not gonna do this, I'll remove this, right? And go here, E and B uh, dot username. Um, e and B dot password. Right, again guys, there is also one cool thing that um, I wanna give it as a challenge. Uh, maybe you guys can try that out and let me know if you could do that. So so here, if you notice, if when we type process.env, the, there is no suggestions, but we know, um, you know, from the environment files, uh, we are passing all these values, URL, username, and password, right? So can you think of a way where it, if it do a space, it's the compiler shows us the suggestions, uh, the URL, username, and password, right? So that we don't have to really type it out like this. And let's say people can also type username and make a mistake uh, because at the right time, it will it will give you undefined error, which is problematic. So is there any way that you could think of solving this problem with auto population? Like TypeScript, TypeScript is all about bringing types to the JavaScript ecosystem, right? So we want to bring that uh, life and breath into the uh, JavaScript world, right? So think about it. If you can do it, it's awesome. Otherwise, I'll, I'll touch base that topic in the next video uh, a little bit. But this is not really important. If you're a beginner, it doesn't really matter. You can start with this and then continue further, right? I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, ta-da, bye-bye from all of them. Bye.